To start off this episode, I want to talk about Wynn Bruce. Wynn Allen Bruce was a photographer and Buddhist who set himself on fire <clears throat> on April 22nd, 2022. It was the Earth Day of this year. Uh, Bruce went to the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. and set himself on fire. And it is presumed by people that knew him that uh, this was a protest against the climate crisis. Bruce uh, was an outspoken voice on uh, climate and the inaction by the United States government for years. And it seems like he telegraphed his intent like as far back as April of 2021 with further confirmations of his intent to do something like this earlier this year. In January, he posted a photo of the monk and activist Thich Nhat Hanh, I, I'm, I apologize, I'm probably mispronouncing it, uh, who wrote uh, in 1965, uh, to burn oneself by fire is to prove that what one is saying is of the utmost importance. So this seems like he was sending a message that the thing he was doing was of, of vital importance. He later added to that post uh, another quote by Han that said, the most important thing in response to climate change is to be willing to hear the sound of the earth through earth's tears through our own bodies, which seems like a pretty strong message to me. So I would direct you to the Wikipedia page or any number of articles that have been written about this since it happened, if you want to know the details of the incident. But it was reported by witnesses that he didn't cry out or scream at all uh, for about 60 seconds while he was on fire and only expressed pain once uh, after the fire was put out. Uh, he was then airlifted to the hospital and he died the next day. I did mention earlier that uh, it's presumed that he did this as a protest against climate change or against the climate crisis. And this is backed up by a number of people, including friends and family, the Buddhist temple, that he attended so that they did not know that he what he was planning but they under but that they understood uh why someone might resort to this they said like they don't recommend uh self immolation <laughs> but but they do understand why uh it would feel like an important topic to an, an action that one would take since i started writing this script there has been a number of uh articles that came out about win bruce and his act but concerns me in a world where we spend so much time talking about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock and celebrity culture and so many people are ignoring the climate issue as well as governments uh, constantly making promises and then not fulfilling them. It, it seems as though this action isn't going to actually have an impact, which is truly tragic. Uh, it's not... it. It is, in my opinion, admirable for someone to commit the act that, like, uh, the way that Win Bruce did. Win Allen Bruce, uh, he, he clearly had a conviction. He clearly had a belief in that, uh, this would have an impact. And he clearly had, um, multiple things going on in his he head. And, and he's a very strong person with strong faith and a strong, uh, viewpoint. And, uh, I find I find it incredibly admirable, and uh, his conviction to the cause is is amazing. Uh, and I think the real tragedy isn't that he did this, but that he had to do this to make a point, and that it might not have the effect that he would like. It still concerns me that in the face of uh, that nothing will change, and that this won't change anything, and that nothing will change anything uh, in the face of global capital and the refrain of the economy over the planet, uh, I'm reminded that for many people, nothing can challenge the status quo. And anyone who does is either regarded uh, as a crank or is imprisoned as a terrorist. Uh, we we live in a, a, a world where people would rather see you arrested for uh, standing up for your beliefs than they, they would ra then change anything. And while even if the mainstream grabbed on to win Bruce as an activist and as a uh, person to be admired, I suspect that we still won't get uh, any climate action. We won't still won't get any um, activity that uh, challenges the status quo in any sense. <sighs> All right. 
with that, I'm going to send you over to this interview with Brentley that I did a couple months ago. Actually, it was January 30th. I apologize to uh, Brentley for the lateness of this release. There was other stuff that I want, I, it, that he got bumped for. Uh, I got really excited about my interviews with Sarah Burrell and, uh, Tori, uh, Douglas. And I really, I, I owe him an apology and I hope that he sees this and understands that I, uh, I'm, I apologize. I, I'm sorry that he got bumped <laughs> and, and I didn't intend for it to take this many months to get to him. Uh, but if you like this ch- chat with Brentley and want to check out his channel, check out his Twitch channel, which I will put a link in the show notes and, uh, check out Unapologetics, the podcast and the Left at the Valley pa- podcast. So before I do that, before I send you to the interview, I want to say thank you for watching and or listening to this and thanks for sharing this around if you do uh it helps get that helps get more views and more listeners and uh this show is available on all the podcast places as well as youtube and i stream on twitch uh whenever i get the chance i also have to thank everyone who supports this show financially you can see their names at the end of the video if so if you're listening to this podcast and there's like a minute or two minutes of just music that's what's happening (laughs) If you want to support me financially, then you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist. And that's a dollar a month or in Canada, it's a dollar fifty. Um, that gets you access to a special patron chat room in the discord server, as well as extra long videos and occasionally early access. And of course, my deep and heartfelt thanks. And if you can't afford to do send any money, then just share the show around, give it a thumbs up on YouTube five-star rating or a review on a podcast app of your choice, as well as Podchaser. There's a link in the show notes or in the description box below where you can give us a rating or a review on Podchaser. I think that's everything. Thank you so much for being uh, here. And here's the interview. All right. Hi, and welcome to The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist, a podcast where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And today I'm joined by Brentley from the Unapologetics podcast and Left at the Valley. Thanks for joining me. Hey, you bet. Thanks for having me, man. This is great. Yeah, so I guess a good place to start is just to tell us a little bit about yourself and some of your shows. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I um, so I was... Basically, completely indoctrinated, you know, uh, from a very young age. Like, uh, I was homeschooled. Uh, was it was just a very much bubbled in existence where I didn't really get to talk to anybody with any differing views at all. You know, it was very like right wing. Was that because that's a big part of uh, Christian <laughs> culture? Right. You know, they, my parents are like part of the the Jesus movement. So in this in the sixties and seventies, you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, they're like hippies, but it's it's you you think that would be like so uh, relaxed, you know, that the hippies would be more. They're not. They're you know, it's almost more so, you know. <laughs> and then so of course, uptight. <laughs> yeah, you know. And then I was like coming through the satanic panic, so that was a big part of it, um, you know, which uh, was terrifying. Um, I, but I'm sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so just like about I don't want to say five years ago. I uh, deconverted, you know, it's just, uh, uh, just, you know, uh, talking to my, the partner I'm with, you know, she, uh, I think she could tell that I was just a decent guy, but I was confused, <laughs> you know, right, about right. things, you know, and she's a, a political science uh, major. So, wow. you know, we had a lot of political conversations and it was just, uh, it was just interesting because I, you know, from where I was at in the right, you know, in the right wing kind of uh, Republican standpoint is everything's for me well what can what can politics do for me for me you know right. and it was you know uh, talking to her was a very much so like well what's best for the governance of everybody you know and that was kind of just something i'd never thought about before and uh and that was kind of what got me um sort of thinking about things and then trump you know <laughs> Trump coming in, <laughs> and that made me think. I was like, "Oh man, maybe I'm not a republic. What even is a republic? Why am I a republic? I don't even know any of this stuff, right? You know." And so I started looking at what a republican was and what it meant, and I was like, "Wait a second, I don't feel like this matches who I am at all." Uh, and then I was like, "Why am I a republican? Well, I'm a Christian. Those are the rules. You, you got to be a republican if you're right, a Christian." Right. And so I was like, "Well, let's see if I'm that 
either. Like, I don't think I'm that, you know, uh, either, because it's just not, it's starting to not make sense. All of it's starting to just make me feel like I'd been brainwashed. Right. Um, you know? And, uh, yeah, and so uh, I ended up listening to, um, I came across God Awful Movies. That's what it was. Oh, okay. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, and I, I recognized all the movies because we watched them growing oh, yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I knew, like, I want to say, like, a good... 85% of all the movies they put up there. It's like, oh, yeah, I know that one. Um, you know, of course, if they're from that time, the newer ones I didn't know. But, right. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, and then that, you know, the way they, the comedy kind of just sort of sneaks in the concepts, you know, and how harmful these viewpoints are uh, without you, you know, because in order to laugh at, at something, you got to be able to identify with it at least a little bit. Right. You know, uh, so it's, I, that's why I try to use comedy, you know, as much as I can to try to get points across because I really feel like it it helps a lot. Um, but yeah, then I pretty much uh, I, I started podcasting right away as soon as I deconverted because <laughs> I was like, that was really helpful for me. So I right. you know, just wanted to try to get out there and help help folks think a little bit more. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not really in the atheist thing anymore, but at the time when I was, it was very like podcasting was a major aspect of it. And there was a ton of podcasts, including one of my old shows. <laughs> that, was oh, like, yeah. <laughs> that was like, uh, it was, it's a, I don't know, a good way to communicate and get in touch with people who have similar ideas. It's kind right. of the same idea I do with this show is that like, it's great to get in touch with people who are like-minded in some way to kind of, have a good conversation and, and maybe somebody who's listening in can relate to us in one way or the other, but haven't heard all of our ideas. And so they'll kind of, they'll hear something new, but also ha hear something familiar. Yeah. It's, and it's also, you know, cause I mean, it's, it's part of that, uh, community. It's, you kind of, uh, you don't really have like a friend group kind of like community, like, uh, you know, religious, uh, communities have, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it's, it was almost really nice because you feel like you're hanging out with your friends, right? you know, and so, you know, cause a lot of people are cast out from their communities, especially the LB, uh, LGBTQIA plus, like you, you know, you probably got, you know, pushed out of your community. So it's, it gives you a, a way to at least feel like you're spending time with other people. Uh, yeah. They they could never hear what I was saying, you know, right. for whatever reason. But <laughs> but I felt like I was there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I guess in a sense, it's like that. Uh, you hope that it stays on the healthy side of it, but it's that parasocial relationship thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> exactly. It can. Yeah, it can be a a, a problem if you <laughs> you don't get down. Yeah, you don't want to show up at their house or whatever. But. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's up, guys? We were hanging out. <laughs> yeah. It might be a little too far, but that's, yeah. That's one thing, like, uh, I know that YouTubing, uh, YouTube channels have a huge audience or whatever, but podcasting always seemed more intimate to me. Like, it was much more like, uh, this. these are the voices I hear every single day when I'm driving to work or whatever, versus right. the YouTube video that I have to spend an hour sitting in front of my TV computer and I have to intentionally be doing that, so it's a whole different mindset, right? Oh yeah, that that was that's a good point because yeah, a, a lot of times with podcasts, I'm listening to them while I'm while I'm working, and when somebody's like, "Oh no, I don't have a podcast form of the YouTube show," I'm like, "Oh shit, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I gotta like, like I, sit down, and <laughs> watch." It. So I'm almost never gonna catch your show if you don't have a podcast version. <laughs> I I, right, I mean, or very limited amount. Yeah, yeah. I, there are some I'll sit and watch, you know, but. Uh, um, you know, yeah, and definitely not as much as the podcast. I, that's pretty much all I do is listen to podcasts and books. You right. Know? Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the questions I tend to ask on this show is what is your political philosophy? Everybody seems to have a different kind of uh, identity or political view, even if we are all leftists or uh, of a particular vein, like we're not right wingers but what are we? So, so what are right. you? <laughs> huh? Okay. Yeah. I, I, that see, and I get I, in a lot of debates and stuff, I get asked that like, so where are you at on the spectrum or, you know, uh, as far as, uh, pol you know, politics goes. And I, I pretty much just have to say I'm on the left. Cause I don't, I don't feel like I'm quite to like the, the level where I'm saying like I'm a communist and stuff like that. Right. 
or so you know socialistic a lot of they sound like they have great ideas you know uh and i'm sure if we like you know if i was to construct a uh, perfect world or a per- perfect system like i'm sure it would be more along those lines or at right. least looking looking similar um but yeah, just like on the left, you know, just justice Democrat. I feel like that's a good, <laughs> <laughs> sure, uh, like, sure, you know, because I'd say I'm farther left than like the the centrist Democrats that are in uh, office. You know, more I think right. we got like, you know, what we got like seven representatives in the progressive uh, <laughs> yep, <laughs> caucus. Yep. So whatever, you know, and that's it. Uh, and they're all in, just in the uh, in the House. We got one in the Senate, maybe. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah is but, there is there a progressive in the Senate? I'm mean, Bernie Sanders, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I suppose that I, counts as one. <laughs> right, you know, but I think that's it. I think yeah. that's it. You know, yeah. so it's. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely uh, feel like govern. You know, governing should be about everybody, and the people that are fine should not get as much focus as the people who really need uh, attention. You know, the people that are right. struggling. You know, those are the people that need uh, attention uh, from the government, or at least acknowledgement from the you know the the government and uh they they just they get it less than the rich people that really don't need any acknowledgement because they're fine yeah you know? <laughs> yeah and that just kills me well um, i mean but. we know uh this is that's part of why like myself i don't have a lot of faith in electoralism because of the the influence of money on politicians and yeah like i mean one can debate the merits of representative democracy on the whole but the system as it currently stands just doesn't seem to be working the way it should. No. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Cause like, you know, I mean the fact that, and you know, we we're getting all over uh mansion and cinema right now, you know, but if it wasn't them, they'd just be somebody else yep, getting paid, yeah. you know, a bunch of money from these mega donors that want to keep their, their oil industry going and their pharmaceutical industry going and uh, their insurance companies and all that shit. That's all moneyed interests. You yeah. know, and they pay the the Republicans, the bad guys, to like just go ahead and say the quiet part out loud, and just be like, "We don't want any of that that uh, <laughs> right. universal anything," you know. And uh, but and then on the other side, I mean, you got the Democrats who are almost like paid to lose, kind of. You right, know what I mean? Right. It's well, like, weird. You know? <laughs> I just was watching something that it was a criticism of Joe Biden, and uh, like the one thing that really pissed me off was when uh, he was in some a kind of a, a town hall or something and somebody said well we're drowning in student debt the, the country is drowning in student debt what can you do to alleviate uh say fifty thousand dollars worth of student debt debt for people and he just said i'm right. not going to do that and I'm, <laughs> I'm like okay so who the fuck is this like what is this guy <laughs> how is he progressive what is what do we like i mean i'm not Damn. an american so it's so I don't actually have an investment in what happens there, I guess, in my life. But people I care about are in America. <laughs> so Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. it just seems like that's fucked. Like, and he's right. supposed and to be the leader of the good guys, right? <laughs> right, exactly. You know, And it's not like when he was a kid and he could mow lawns to pay for fucking college and everything. Like, Then right. that's completely gone. You have to pretty much go bankrupt just oh, to yeah. try to get an education around here. It's insane. Yeah. Like people are paying their student loans like thirty years after they're out of school, stuff sort of thing. Like it's yeah. ridiculous. And then not making enough money, you know, to you know, barely enough money to do that because half the time they don't get the job that's in the field of the thing they went to school for. So it's just, yeah, it's a mess. Man. Yeah, it's a mess. it is a mess. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't want to say the Canadian Canada is much better. Like our Canadian system of like uh, schooling, you still got to spend you know, get student loans for tuition and like we have universal health care, but the rest is just a mirror image of the United States, really. <laughs> yeah. And especially from what I'm hearing lately, uh, apparently there's some sort of uh, uh like our our uh what is it? Like our the the virus of stupidity seemed to jump to the border oh, there. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well we bad. like to we like to say that uh, imagine that it's something we inherited from the United States, but like we've had in in my home province here of Saskatchewan, there's been KKK factions for for decades, like for wow. I don't even know how long, like since before I was ever born. So 
<laughs> Jeez, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard there was like southern flags flown and shit. I'm oh like, yeah, what the fuck. That's not even the right country. No, like, what it are doesn't you doing? Make sense <laughs> at all. I actually like I I do a mail run uh, where I deliver mail to various towns, and uh, I do that for my dad when I'm on my days off for my main job. And in one town, there is a Confederate flag hanging in the window of some dude's house that I see whenever I'm driving through that town. It's on Main Street on their town. Wow. Yeah. Like it's, it's, that's insane. It's insane. <laughs> I, what? I often imagine myself being the kind of person who could throw a brick through that window, but also I can't like, I can't go to jail. I have kids. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but fuck, I would sure love to do something about that, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause that's, that's crazy. I mean. It's not, first of all, the thing only lasted four years to begin with. Obama's, right. you know, presidency was longer than the fucking Confederacy. Uh, but just that, but then, you know, there's, we have that, you know, up north, people will have Southern flags and you're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? And it's, a lot it's of times- just a signal that they're racist. That's all it is at this point. <laughs> right. But the, the thing they love to say is, well, I'm, I'm a rebel, you know, and I like to just be a rebel. And it's like, okay, but that's not what you get that. That's not what that flag means. Right. <laughs> right. Like, you know? right. I have a flag in the back here that means more rebel than any of that Confederate bullshit. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. If, if rebels, what you're looking for, you got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's <laughs> oh, not scary. a rebel. No, so you're yeah. a leftist, I guess, but, uh, yeah, so absolutely. that's cool. Uh, I, I, that is kind of the, the idea of the show is like, I, I don't, I, I consider myself an anarchist communist, but I don't want to like be one of these sectarian types who says that everybody else is wrong and no other has, they have no good points because right. I know there's, I'm not right about everything all the time. So, <laughs> right. so I know that I could <laughs> yeah. be wrong about some stuff here. <laughs> all right yeah that's uh th th those systems i find so interesting i've uh talked to a, a couple different people about them and i always uh you know it's a very i don't know if you call it a, is it an ideologue where you you construct a a perfect world or a perfect system to try uh, to utopian or it's <laughs> utopian okay yeah <laughs> and it's like yeah and that's uh uh but I, i'm i'm usually like okay so we're sort of on the same side but what can we do next you know in the system that we got yeah, yeah. um you know that's generally my take on it because i just i'd love to get to a place like that but i feel like we got so far to go oh that it's it, almost yeah. <laughs> it, you know? it can feel pretty daunting it's because uh, i i consider myself a bit of a utopian right so right. i do see the end goal as like this perfect society or very near perfect where everybody has their needs met and we kind of deal with problems in a democratic, reasonable way. And, <laughs> right. and everybody has the education that they need and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, also, <laughs> yeah, we have to, we have to live in the world we exist in and right. progress forward somehow through this. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, <laughs> So I, but, I, I try to, yeah. So I try to like get, I want to get us moving closer to those things, but it's just sort of like baby steps and then backwards a lot of times, actually, you know, you go and take a couple baby steps, baby steps. And then the, uh, money, you know, money and interests like crank up the, the gas there on the, <laughs> you know, the pushback. Yeah. And then we get dragged back even farther than where we, you know, we were trying to get, but again, like that's America. I don't know how, uh, it's I know very you guys similar gotta, here. Yeah. It's very similar here. Right. I mean, you have the more um, parties, right? Kinda we do. Like yeah. Yeah. We have more yeah, parties. Right. So there's sometimes it seems better, but other times it's like, okay, so now you're just spreading out your votes. And that means that you're stuck. You're still stuck with two main parties, the conservatives and the liberals. <laughs> See, uh, okay. <laughs> like <laughs> the NDP exists, but they, they never get like federal power, right? Like they can't like rule uh, the country, like run the country. Right. Right, right. Oh, okay. Which is, I mean, and they're still part of the neoliberal capitalist system, right? Like they still placate big business. They still say the things that uh, oil companies want to hear rather than, you know, they have done things like try to bring forward like universal pharmacare or like uh, a wealth tax, stuff like that. But they can do that because they don't have any power. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah you know you can talk a really big game if you know everything you bring to the table is going to get voted down 
Right, that's true. You know, and that's I'll see that a lot. Uh, you know, in American politics, they we have like I said, like I have like six, six or seven uh, progressive candidates that I you know focus like a lot of attention on. Um, but like you know, people get mad at, at them for not being far enough, right. and I'm just like, dude, they're not getting even just the the little stuff, you know, <laughs> right? Done. The like, system you doesn't want actually to- help them do anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, because if you got you got these two two guys, you got the obvious bad guys, which are the Republicans, the conservatives, right, and then you got the the Democrats, who are made up of pretty much. You don't want to be the 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 progressive part of that and fight both of these people, right? Because then you're just gonna you know you're gonna lose uh, everything. You know, it's just it's, it's just not a good idea. You know, yeah, you gotta, for just sure. got to take what you can get. But. Yeah, what do you think of the idea that the system actually tends to corrupt? Uh, even the well-meaning politicians. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's true. I, you know, it's almost like the you know money, money just corrupts. Like a lot of times, it it just does. Yeah. Um, it's like almost like when you see these uh, people who uh, who obtain money and they're like a loving person at, at first and everything, and then they obtain all this money and get all this power and stuff, and then it's like they, it's almost it's weird because they just like demonstrate how much money they got by how shitty they can be to other people without any, you know, without a person just taking yeah. it just be like, okay, sure. It's, you know, right, <laughs> that seems right. to be like, but it's like, you know, that, but in politics, you know? it's like the guy <laughs> like, who abuses the waitress because if he does, if she lets him get away with it, maybe he'll give a good tip. <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, or she could get fired because he's a funder yeah. of some whatever, That's you know, right, because he's a part owner or some bullshit. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. 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 But like, yeah. I definitely think it corrupts for sure. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things about, uh, uh, about the U S is that like when you have your healthcare tied to your job, right. You're, you're fucked in many ways if you lose your job. So it, it it seems even more scary than it is here. Right. Yeah. It's like, and especially if you have mental uh, health issues, which I think the majority of Most people all do. people do, you yeah. know, like that's just that part of life, um, you know, and you have to have the, the job to get the insurance to support your mental health, but you need the, you know, you need the mental health in order to get the job. And then it just ends up being this, like, you're never, you know, <laughs> well, then unless you're just doing and depending on the job, something. it can actually damage your mental health too, right? Like, cause you're going in and depending on what your workplace is like, like it can be right. pretty tough. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the biggest uh, things about uh, working. That's like the first, that's, that's what I put first. I'm like, you know, if, it, if I got to take a bit of a money cut, uh, but I might, I'm not sacrificing my mental and physical, you know, my mental health and my physical body. Uh, I think that's a, uh, uh, I think that's a plus, you know? <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's pretty weird though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's messed up, you know, because you need that, that help uh, from the get-go, really. Everybody yeah. should. And here, mental health really, even if you have a job, um, you know, mental health isn't covered. It was like, I think, the, the this is the way it was, it was so weird. You had to get to $1,500 uh, before they, st- of spending money on mental health specifically, before you get any coverage at all, right? Really? So they still charge you. Yeah, a hundred percent. So, but that restarts every year and I would just make it each year. Like I was like almost there and it was like, oh, nope, we're starting over again. And I was like, man, I was almost at $1,500 for the year. And it's like, <laughs> nope, starting over. So you, wow. you might never reach it without a trip to the hospital or something that charges all that at once. Right. You're never, you, you just never get there. So you just, it's basically not covered. That's you know, at brutal, all. yeah. I mean, mental like counseling services and mental health stuff here isn't actually covered by our uni- our universal health care. Uh, oh, wow! <laughs> so I didn't know that. Yeah. So wow. uh, I personally, I like my uh, my job. I have an insurance plan through them, and it's like the opposite of that. Actually, like I get six hundred dollars a year that they will reimburse me, and that's that. Like, so right. oh wow! I don't have to spend any money ahead of time. And I will just get that back from my uh, insurance company. So it's almost the opposite type of insurance of what you have there. Like <laughs> what I just described, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. It's funny. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, and I hear it's like dental either. They don't cover dental up there, right? Yeah, no, that's right. But again, with insurance, they give you, say, $2,000 a year that they will cover. So. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. That's a good amount. Of shit. Yeah. Do well, I mean, with my insurance company, that is. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> see. Yeah, okay. my work there. Uh, yeah, because oh, so you get it on top of so you so you have the universal, and then you can get like more uh, healthcare. On yeah, top? The, yeah. Like uh, you go to your job or whatever, and then you get like uh, what we actually call benefits. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> and you get it like you pay a certain amount every month for your insurance, and then they will cover you up to whatever amount of use each year. Oh, I see. And okay, yeah. It. Huh. I don't know how they make money if everybody uses the full amount that they're given every year. <laughs> right. Use, yeah. But... That's, how does that even work? Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, so. I was just talking to a coworker like, and yeah, like at, at the start of every year it resets. So then I have $2,000 that I can spend on my own teeth every year. And oh, that's nice. yeah. So as long as I don't have something major go wrong, then I'm usually covered. Right. Oh wow, that's great. See, uh, yeah, it's and it's interesting to me too. Just back to like the uh, uh, trying to, you know, we're, we've been trying to get this universal healthcare thing for ages, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's it's so interesting to me because it, the one of the the way that everything works, it seems that you know I was talking about how they, uh, uh, I want the government to acknowledge these people that don't have versus the people that do have, and it's just it's so interesting because a lot of times. The people that do have their the way that they vote, it's not so that they can get anything. They're just trying to take somebody something away from somebody else, right? You know what I mean? And like health insurance is like a, a perfect way to say that because they're like, oh, people should have a choice, you know. And I'm like, a choice for what? Worse health care? Yeah. Like, why would you know if we all get like the best health care or just like make it that our goal, right? You know, then you don't like, why would, you know, what's the problem? You know, but they're like, oh, but no, I deserve more than what that, the poor. Because I can there. pay for it, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because if I, yeah, I'm paying more, I should get, and it's like, but that's why it should be, there should be no money whatsoever in healthcare. Right. You know, it should just be covered, it'd be taxed, and that's we're done with it. You yeah. Know? It, it makes me think, like, because people who are, uh, who are like that, who imagine themselves as being more free or having more choice because they can pay for it. Like, I think they have a really limited view of the word freedom, right? Like a person who's poor in a free country isn't free. They have no choices. They have, they're limited in so many things. Like, sure. They can pick three different brands of ketchup. Like who gives a shit? (laughs) But, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's nothing. But they yeah. can't afford to eat. <laughs> so how <Right>. is that free? <laughs> yeah. That that drives me crazy. I remember watching. There was a uh, we were covering uh, a while ago. We were, we were talking about uh, Stephen Crowder on the show, and he was talking about. He's like, man, this is the most free country in the world. And apparently, he's been to Canada or something like that. Oh sure. And he's like, if you want to eat most, uh, um, you know, if you want to eat the most unhealthy stuff, you're allowed to do that. If you want to chew your tobacco and shoot your gun in your backyard, you have the freedom to do that. And I'm, in my head, I was just like, yeah, but that's fucking it. That's all you, that's all you have freedom. <laughs> and that you're just basically saying that the companies have the right to poison you. Cause it, it's, I don't think everybody's trying to purposefully be unhealthy, right? but they don't, you know, but you just basically made laws so that they could sell you whatever, poison <laughs> that yeah. they want you know and it's like you just gotta be like well at least i'm free <laughs> you know <laughs> it just like, it just seems like such a backwards use of the word freedom like yeah oh yeah yeah you're free just to be as poor as you want or whatever you know because yeah, chances right. are you're, you're not gonna get your piece of the pie i mean that's just the way it goes yeah it's too many right. people <laughs> you know well, I suppose we might as well, we're almost at a half hour, so we might as well go on to uh, the counter-propaganda say- segment. Hell yeah. So for under counter-propaganda, you have urine helps fight COVID. <laughs> so I'm assuming that you think that it's not true. <laughs> I don't think so, you know? Um <laughs> <laughs> Medical I've, experts you know, don't uh, don't uh, think that that's a thing that will happen. I mean, just because it tastes great doesn't mean <laughs> that it helps with COVID. You know, it's true. It's true. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought that was really funny because uh, when we had uh, when we were talked about doing the show, I had uh, seen a bunch of uh, <laughs> uh, videos on that, and people, it's the the disinformation that's going around is just absurd. Yeah. Uh, 
with this this COVID stuff. And it's like, dude, we got the cure right here. What are you doing? You know, we have the cure available. Uh, you know, and they're they just if if the Democrats are saying it's okay or or it's good or whatever, you know, then they're like, I did I'm against it, you know, and that seems to be the <laughs> yeah, the for logic sure. there. Yeah. <laughs> so that means that if the Democrats say don't drink your pee, then you must because it's right, good exactly. Pee. Obviously, you have to do it to trigger the libs. <laughs> right. Because the Illuminati is trying to get you to not drink your pee, man. Right. Because right. they know it cures all the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yes. This, oh, this is just... a system that makes sense. This is a. <laughs> <laughs> right. And like I said, like apparently it's uh, it's hopped the border, um, you know, because on Left at the Valley, that's a, uh, a, a Canadian based show. Um, you know, and they um, they were just telling me today. We just got done recording that there was a, uh, a car- the caravan. Oh yes. you know of anti vaxxer the COVID uh, convoy. <laughs> yeah, the COVID <laughs> convoy. That's a great name for it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, he was saying that the numbers are all inflated. Oh yeah, uh, and everything. Yeah. Big time. Okay. See. Yeah, and, like uh, I was looking. It, some of the people who involved with it were saying that there's like. Uh, 50,000 trucks or whatever, but mm-hmm. some of the numbers that are coming out of police services, and I don't trust the police most of the time, <laughs> but it's like 300 <laughs> trucks and 200 passenger vehicles. <laughs> like, it's like maybe 500, you know? <laughs> wow. Okay. But they're just, wow. It's crazy. They can get away with it. But I guess it's, that's self-reporting versus like, yeah. you know, uh, otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They actually have like, uh. They, in some of their ads for, uh, on Facebook and whatnot, they were using pictures from, uh, the convoy for the special Olympics down in the U S a few years ago. It it was called the world's great largest convoy. And they were taking pictures from that and saying that it was pictures from this convoy. Oh, see. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) That's too funny. Okay. That makes sense. Wow, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, this this anti uh, anti vax stuff too, and it's weird too because there's a lot of it on the left as well, you know, and that's sort of freaky and, and disappointing. Yeah. Um. But well, they we used to say the that anti vax stuff came from the left, but then it became politicized and became part of the right. So I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. <clears throat> I mean, I could see that because you you know a lot of the herbal people that like all the herbal remedies and all that stuff, you know, um, and you know, I, I don't know the chakra. What, what, do, you, what do you call that? <laughs> yeah, new agey Eastern. types or whatever. Yeah, woo woo. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> and so a lot of them are on the left. You know, um, you know, because most of the time they just they used to be just good, com- yeah, compassionate people, right? right. Like they just want to help each, you know people and, and accept everybody and all that. And that's great. That's great. And but they just seem to be bad at science. That's yeah, <laughs> and skepticism <laughs> towards big pharma is is a reasonable thing, right? Like, I mean, of course, oh, yeah. pharmaceutical companies care about, uh, making more, making money more than they care about the well being of people. Yeah. That's why you have the, uh, the op- opioid epidemic epidemic, right? That's why you have oh, yeah. like the diabetes medicine going up in price every year and being unaffordable for diabetics, but right. they don't want us to actually die in mass numbers. That's why vaccines mm-hmm. work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you don't want to, because that. Yeah, that's the thing. When it comes to to like addiction stuff or stuff that you know people are going to continue to use uh, forever, yeah, you could see them going that route. But yeah, if it just kills them all together, that's not gonna. Yeah. That's not good for business. They don't, you know, they want bad. us alive so that they can keep making money. <laughs> exactly. And the opioid one just killed me because I'm just like, even when it came out, you know, with the uh, with big pharma and the um uh, or Purdue pharma, right, and the. Uh, uh, oxycontin to uh, oxycontin and all that people knew what opioids were were right like we knew what those things were right that, that's not that's not like it just brand new no that's you know? right yeah <laughs> it's like it just killed me and then they're like oh man it's bad and we're like yeah fucking no Turns shit out this man. thing what that we should have known was if ad- addictive was actually addictive <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we paid doctors to say that it wasn't. So <laughs> they literally changed the definition of addiction. Yeah. So that they could say that it's oh, it's you know, it's not addictive. It's just habit forming or, or right. They they used a different word. Uh, I think it was just habit forming 
or something like that. Which it's not a, a habit forming. You you literally get sick if you can't have it. I was I've had issues with that. I right. uh, yeah, for years I went to I ended up having to go to a methadone clinic for a long time. Was right? so, wow. Yeah, but uh I got I got off of that and it's uh, been what, two years? Two, oh, three years now. Yeah, wow. Um, but yeah, but it's not fun and it's very, no, very right? difficult to yeah. to get off of. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it's one of those things like I I I understand the uh like I say the skepticism towards the pharmaceutical industry. But they're not hiding the cure for cancer. Their <laughs> vaccines work and are real. And right. this is just, this is stuff that is proven through other experts, not just through Pfizer or whatever. Right. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it gets passed all over the world. Like yeah. we're checking ourselves, checking ourselves, checking ourselves. And then we're like, okay, here's what we got. Let's send it over this, you know, overseas and see what they got to do. And then they send it over to other people. And then, and then it gets back to us, all that data from yeah, everybody right. checking everybody. I mean, come on. You're going to say they're all lying. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Like, come on. I mean, if people want to protest the vaccine companies, uh, they should be talking about the intellectual property rights that they're withholding so that other countries can't produce the vaccines themselves. Like, right. Cause yeah. that's, that's the shit right there. That's stopping, you know, other countries from, uh, eliminating COVID as well. Right. Uh, which is yeah, that's a problem. part of Pfizer and, and Moderna wanting to make their money. This, I mean, it's capitalism. It's the system, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. That is, that is what we should be getting upset about because that's fucked up why why would we hoard that because i mean this is a global it's a pandemic man it's global yeah. what if if they got mutations on the you know across on the other side of the world it's gonna get here eventually yep so you might as well you know get everybody the cure and we might not have had this um this omicron thing yeah happen, you never know, you know right like i mean i yeah. guess at some point it's like how do we know what would actually happen but because right. we've been forced back to work We've, we've been forced back to our normal lives, despite the fact that we haven't defeated this virus yet. Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. You know? And so now we're all having to go back into really uh, dangerous conditions. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's, especially I'm down in Florida uh, and it's just a mess down here. It's yeah. a fucking mess. There, it's just no, I mean, it's everybody just is acting like it's over. Right. You know, and it's just like. We're just going to wow, ignore yeah. full, the full hospitals and the dying people. We're just going to ignore right. the people who are getting sick. <laughs> yeah. And it's great because, and you know, it goes in like waves. And it's so funny. Like the, there was like well, the one day and like all the right wing media picked up. Like, oh, look, Florida's got the lowest of all the, all the country or whatever, you know. And then it's like the next day it's up higher than everybody else because that's how it works. And everybody right. was like, yeah, the experts said that was going to happen just before it goes up really high. And then that's exactly what happened. Yeah. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, yeah, like living in Saskatchewan, it's a very similar story. Like uh, every, our, our, our peak for Omicron has come after everybody else's because, I don't know, it came later here or whatever. We got a smaller population. Maybe that's it. But our our leader, Scott Moe, has decided that that means <laughs> it's time to lift as lift some restrictions. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, it's frustrating. Like, look, I, I you know, I don't like re restrictions either. You know, I don't like restrictions as much as the next guy. Yeah. You know, I don't like the government telling me what to do. I get that. I really do. But like at the same time, y'all ain't listening. <laughs> like, right, exactly. You know, listen to reason, you know? And it's like, well, what are we going to do? Because we can't have people just dying all over the place and getting other people sick. It's just, it, it can't work. <laughs> no, it can't. It cannot be done this way. <laughs> right. Yeah. We got to, you know, so I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like an in-between. And I thought that, uh, you know, Biden had actually done that by saying you don't have to get vaccinated you just got to get tested weekly but then they turned that into being tortured because it does kind of hurt you know the test uh <laughs> and so they were like oh i'm being tortured and like no the fuck you're not man come on jeez you guys are supposed to be tough right you know? <laughs> foes and comrades so i'm assuming uh for foes 
Is this, uh, are these must be both foes, Oath Keepers and Ron DeSantis? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. So I was supposed to do one, a good one and a, a bad one. A good one and okay. a bad one, but you got two <laughs> bad ones, so we can... <laughs> so who are the Oath Keepers and why are we uh, calling them foes? So the Oath Keepers were, uh, basically, they had pretty much planned to, uh, they, they planned out like the January 6th insurrection in a, in such a way to where they had weapons you know stashed away and, and uh, you know it's got got kind of all over the news because you know everybody's trying to be downplaying it and everything like that and now you're seeing that oh no this was a coordinated attack and the oath keepers were uh they're like a far right you know extremist i think they're you would even you'd even call them a militia right right you know uh, so yeah, they, and they really wanted to just, uh, they wanted to do whatever they could to stop the election from, from going the way that it did. Um, and they had like weapons and everything, just a lot of planning and they had like videos of them and stuff. And you could see them all with their hands on each other's back, like holding on, you know, and just like pushing through the crowd to get through and everything. It was really scary, <laughs> scary yeah. stuff. That's what's so interesting when you, like, you know, people talk about, oh, the left and the right. And it's like, yeah, the left has like issues, you know, especially sure. in America, you know, but it's like as far left as you go, if you go to the farthest left, you could possibly go, right? What do you got? You got people that uh, will ask a crowd of people to snap instead of clap because they're so concerned about the maybe couple of people in the crowd with PTSD, right? you know, right. and it's like, what do you got on the other side? Oh yeah, you got crazy people with, in militias with AR-15s that want to <laughs> kill a section of the the population because right. they're you know have different colored skin. They or whatever. literally want to start like, a race war. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how is this even comparable to that? Yeah. Like it, you know, it's just and I mean, and don't get me wrong. Like I see how like being super extremely far left like that, like asking me to snap instead of clap, like that could get annoying. Sure, but sure. but. Also, you know. accommodation is good. <laughs> like, that's a humanist thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you never know if you're going to have an issue yeah. that somebody else might think is dumb. And they, you know what I mean? But, like, we all listen to each other because we care about, uh, you know, uh, uh, making each other comfortable. Right, you know? right. Yeah. In we want to be, uh, we're all in this together. We care about your well-being. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like... So yeah, um, but yeah, they they were really a, a terrifying group there. Um, Crazy, but, yeah, and, uh, and Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. He, <laughs> oh, man, he is a fucking. He's scary too. He's he's really scary. Uh, one of the things I do want to bring up about him is he did this just recently. He did this stop woke act, and I, it's funny because I can't remember what the, it, the he has it all like. Uh, you know, each letter meaning a different word, right? Of course. Um, and, but it wasn't even, it didn't even spell woke. It was embarrassing. But like, you know, that whole thing was ridiculous. But yeah, it's basically saying that um, any, they're kind of going off of the whole, there's a, another law, I believe in is it Texas. I think it's, it's either Texas or Alabama, you know, one of those fucking places. Uh, but they can sue each other if they, they can sue all the people that, um, uh, get you know anybody that helps somebody get an abortion, they can sue all the people and sue the person that gets the abortion. Oh, is that like the uh, the Texas law? That's it. So it is. It's Texas. Okay, good. Yeah, it, it's just like, and it kind of they were like, oh, you know, this it, it, they ignored it in federal court because they're like, it's not really a federal matter. Then it's more of a civil matter. Right. So you know, and, and they until the law it works they its passed, way up, right, or whatever. <laughs> well, they did. They, they didn't hear the case. Oh, they, they, didn't they even... just well. It, no, they just, re they were like, no, oh, nope, doesn't, uh, you guys just, you know, we're not going to talk about it. So they didn't say no, but they, they didn't mm. say yes either. And so that just means that it's just going to keep going. Um, but yeah. And so they did sort of the same thing, but with teaching CRT in oh, elementary yes. schools yeah. and stuff. Right. So now you can sue, I mean, if it passes, this, he just introduced the bill, but if it passes, that means that people will be able to sue the school if they think, you know, something that the school might be teaching CRT, which again, well, no, yeah, no schools okay. teach. But like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's really frustrating. And then you got other, uh, I think it was in tech. No, this one I think was in Alabama. They have like a list of books that they're getting rid of. And okay. of course, majority of them. Yeah, the majority of them are, um, you know, uh, 
basically just the experiences of like slaves and stuff like that. Like good in the Holocaust or books about the Holocaust right, that like they want to get actual rid of. history that like it actually helped people progress through society. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's just like, wow. And it, it just seems so obvious that what they're doing, you know, but it's like it still goes through because there's just that much bigotry in right. this uh, country. It's It sucks. It's awful. Yeah, I suppose like when you build your society on white supremacy and then you reach a point where you're just like, nah, we're just going to forget about that. <laughs> we're going to pretend that didn't happen. It's it's pretty yeah. hard to recognize that you're still doing it. Right. Yeah. And it was supposed to be done like over in the blink of an eye because of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, yeah, who was assassinated and jailed. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, dude, you get that he died, right? He was murdered yeah. by the people that didn't like, you know, what he was doing. You're like, yeah, but it all changed that day. No one did it. No one did it. It all kept going. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. The geez, fact that like- yeah. Martin Luther King Day is a thing doesn't mean racism ended. <laughs> right. Yeah, that does. Yeah, exactly. And then the sad thing is, is that most of, uh, you know, the only like people with uh, good jobs and stuff get that day off. Right. Most people have to work yeah. that day anyway. It's so stupid. So they don't even get, the, a lot of people don't even get the day off that represents their freedom. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the same thing as like, uh, Juneteenth just came up as it became a holiday, right? Was right. it like last year or whatever? And yeah, I mean, sure, it's great that they're acknowledging that this is a day, but like you say, the people who need it off are often the people who have to work it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's really messed up. And then it's cr the the reason that holidays celebrated in the first place is crazy. You know, right. I, I just learned about this like two, like I want to say a couple years ago, where it's just like they, they that was the day they found out they right. were free, right. and it was not when they were free. That's the you know it was a, a non-zero number <laughs> after <laughs> the time they were actually free. Non-zero number. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What? Yeah. It took them more than one second to, <laughs> to let them know. <laughs> Yeah, no, it took a while too, right? I thought it was a uh, um so many years or something. Yeah, I can't remember. I believe. I I don't know enough about it to like uh make a informed guess, but right. Yeah, and they had to come let people know like, "Hey guys, come on. We said you were not allowed to do this anymore." And they were just like, "Shit, I thought they weren't going to notice." <laughs> Nobody you know, was like, going to ever come down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come on. Jeez, that's fucked up. <laughs> Uh, right. yeah, yeah. So that would be my foes and foes, foes and uh, foes. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Off the top of your head, do you have a comrade of or somebody that uh, thinks yeah, he's doing a this great guy, job? Yeah, Corey, and he does this show, Mind of a Skeptical oh, Leftist. Wow. It's great. Yeah, you I know him. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't say. Have you ever uh, have you ever heard of the uh, the Utah Outcast podcast? Oh, yep, yep. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I really like them a lot. I know uh, X and Felicia they, fairly well, and uh, I don't think I've ever actually spoken to Kyle. So, <laughs> oh right, I know. I always missed him too. I was on. I think I've been on there like two or three times, and I missed him every single time somehow. I don't know how that happened. Just bad luck. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I would definitely put put them up there. Um, let's see who else. There's got to be. Another good show. Um, well, I really like uh, cognitive dissonance, of course. You know, it's a, they're good folks. Sure, sure. <laughs> we just we just had them on um, left at the valley at the end of the year. Oh, cool. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> it's the first time getting to talk to them, so that was pretty cool. How long have fun. you been doing <laughs> left at the valley? Uh, left at the valley is fairly new for me. Um, they've been doing it. Uh, I'm going to say like five years or so. Yeah, this they is were doing it five. The years. Second iteration, isn't it? That was left at the valley. Yeah. Yeah, so I yeah they um, had the show and it was uh, had a great cast too, um, and two of them I think uh, moved away because they used to do it in studio like right. everybody was in in the studio, um, which is super cool. But they um, two of them I think uh, moved away and then um, Nancy the one um, she was uh, a lot older, uh, but super she was so funny and so good. But she passed away, and so they kind of stopped the show for a while. It was uh, yeah unfortunate you know but he he knew that nancy would have wanted to keep going so he you know started it up started it back up and uh 
Yeah, I made the cut. <laughs> okay, so that was cool. It can be hard to restart a show uh, after you've taken a, a break from it. That's kind of what oh, yeah. what happened here. Like brainstorm, we took a an extended break because I was going through some life changes, and then when I started oh. podcasting again, it just wasn't the same. So I started doing this show. But oh, uh, I see. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's weird because people really look to that uh continuous like the, that reliability yeah. of a podcast yeah. you know uh, so if you take a break the same thing happened with unapologetics we're we're kind of getting uh trying to get it back together right now right. but um cuz uh that for that show was um my partner and I she's a a person of color she's a black woman that's a, a political science major and so and I you know I've got no ed- I'm highly uneducated you right. know what I mean like I have no education <laughs> I don't even really have a high school education cuz I I was homeschooled you know uh and you know I could tell you a lot of stuff about the bible though <laughs> uh but <laughs> you know as far as like actual information not not so much right um so that was a fun show cuz I was just learning so much and and people were really responding to it uh in a positive way but we kind of had to uh, take a break because our schedules uh, changed. So we barely got any time to gather to be able to do the show. Um, but we are, we did figure out a way to start doing it again. So we should have one come out pretty right soon here. No, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. is there anything that I didn't ask you about that you think we should talk about? Hmm. Oh, that's a, I'm going to take that question. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to start asking that shit. Yeah, that is smart. <laughs> Cause I swear every time you hang up with somebody, they're like, Oh, I was really hoping to talk about this. Thing. And I'm like, Oh man. We yeah. Should've, yeah. We should have um, talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. I just, uh, I would, I do want to talk about like real briefly. Um, uh, I, I alluded to it earlier about the sobriety. I want to start, I want to really want to try a, uh, start a resource for folks that are struggling. Um, cause I got some really, you know, I've got, I've been through a lot with this stuff. And so I, I kind of collected all these fun, right. uh, not fun, but they're good resources and they're helpful, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, for getting sober and stuff. That's cool. And, uh, Did so, you? So, did you go through AA or did you go through a, like a more secular type of recovery program? Well, I did see, and it was kind of funny. I, I for the um, opiates, I, t- I did went through it a couple times, but it was so interesting because I was a Christian when I went through most of the time, and it was a psychiatric uh, hospital that because oh, okay. pretty much all addiction, all addiction stuff is mental health. Uh, a lot of times we don't think about it that way, but it that is what it is for sure. Um, and so I went through that uh, treatment program and I was still a Christian and everything. And so uh, you're kind of rolling, I was rolling my eyes sort of at a lot of the psych, this, uh, you know, the uh, therapists and whatnot. And uh, it was just funny because like I, you know, quit and then I got addicted again, like go figure, you know, I didn't listen to the therapist and didn't believe in the science and all this other stuff. So I just, just thought I needed Jesus. Right. And, and that uh, didn't help. you know. Not at all. No, yeah, it's crazy, right? Because huh. um, <laughs> uh, people just tell me, like, you got, you're trying to do it too much on your own. You got to rely on Jesus. And I was just like, I'm doing, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, that is so irritating to hear because you're just like, what does that mean? Put that in practical fucking terms, man. Right. I'm trying to do everything, like, you know? In what way does Jesus literally help me get off of drugs? <laughs> that yes just tell me which i'm ready to go man i need to get off you know and it was just not and no answer just like oh just keep reading the bible and i'm like i'm doing that right <laughs> you know, right a but lot I'm still, yeah i'm still addicted yeah <laughs> yeah it wasn't you know so this i deconverted and i was still using at the time um like i said about uh when i deconverted about five five or six years ago and uh then ended up going back to the same program okay. and it worked like a charm. Right. You know? It was the same. Wow. Yeah. And so it was just because I was listening to the science and right. the, the therapists and everything. So it's just, yeah. That, and it, it worked, you know, it, it, I stuck with it. So it uh, wasn't like the NA uh, type of big book, you know, the trust in a higher power type thing that worked for you. It was like the actual science worked for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And they did have like um, AA groups and there's, there's some aspects I think that are helpful of AA. Like there's the, the community is always good. Right. Um, being able to speak your mind and in, in, in front into a group without, you know, without any limitations whatsoever, I think is a good thing. 
but the higher power part's garbage. That doesn't do anything, but, um, you know, and the shaming kind of part, which are, both of those are sort of, you right, know, right. Uh, in tandem, right? Like, cause you know, the, uh, the shaming comes from the higher power. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, uh, yeah, I think that it's just not helpful. The, the thing that I found the most helpful, uh, after, as far as like, I mean, of course the medications like Suboxone, ex- extremely helpful. P- methadone clinics get a bad rap and I get it. I get why they have uh, make get a bad rap, but they are very helpful because they help you normalize your life and right, so you're right. off the streets, you know, cause it was just a, it, you were just like seeking, you know, you're, it's like your Pac-Man, you're just going all the time looking for, <laughs> for, uh, stuff to eat. But, um, but the other thing that after that I got into drinking and started drinking is sort of a replacement. Mm. And uh, to get off of that was this Alan Carr book, is like get off uh, uh, control alcohol the easy way. So I would okay. recommend that. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's but, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm happy that you're uh, you're healthy and you're sober. And that's all right. Thanks. <laughs> Me too. I, <laughs> <That's good. laughs> it's uh, I mean, I grew up. My dad was an alcoholic. I drank a lot, you know, for most of my life. I never was on anything harder than booze really, but I spent, oh, yeah. I spent a lot of years just drinking and like to the point where friends, that was like part of my identity was Corey drinks, drinks beer. <laughs> right. Me too. See, that was a big part of it. And it's like, yeah, okay, exactly. well, at some point that's not a good thing, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Except it's so, it's yeah. okay to enjoy some beer, but. It shouldn't be your identity. <laughs> right. It's not who you are. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, and it's weird how, you know, those type of uh, habits and, and uh, drug addictions like that, just that's what they turn into. They turn into a part of your personality right. and identity and all that stuff. And it's like, that's, that's not real. That's the drug messing with you. Right. Not usually. right. You know, that's a drug telling, Hey man, I'm part of your personality. And you, you without know, me, like, you are nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It's so weird how that works. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, I guess where can people find you and your content? Um, if you go to uh, leftatthevalley.ca, um, they they got a great web page up there. You can find get access to all of those shows. Um, if you go to pretty much any podcast uh, player, you can put in unapologetics, uh, spell with an X at the end, um, and you can pretty much find uh, all the the shows that we that we had up until a certain point and i'm still putting some other stuff on there as well um and then you can uh if in youtube if you go to if you put in uh, unapologetic spell with an x panel stream uh every wednesday we do at 11 30 uh, p.m eastern standard time we do an, about an hour and a half show where we just watch videos and and comment and it's it's mostly funny and fun cool. uh it's not usually uh very serious at all <laughs> But it's a, it's a really good time. So yeah, check it out. Right on. And you do Twitch streaming as well, right? I do. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get into that. Yeah. So skeptic, uh, at skeptic Brentley, I'm trying to start doing this. So <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm not used to this one yet. So I'm still learning quite a bit about it, but it's, uh, it is, it is interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's a new platform, right? So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like you can just do it. I've seen people just get up and walk away from the screen, you know, or just be eating chips and shit. You know, I'm like, this is, a, this is me all day, you know, <laughs> like, like, I can sit here perfect. And eat chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, <this> great. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, somebody, one of my other, uh, podcast guests, uh, told me that I should start streaming on Twitch more often. Like I said, just, if you wake up, if you can't sleep at night, just get on the stream and just start streaming. And it's like, wow. Just start talking. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someday <laughs> I'll think the that. Videos. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I did a couple where I was just going through a right-wing watch on Twitter and just clicking each video oh, yeah. and talking about it. Right you on. Know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I still have trouble with the being on camera by myself without a script. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I'm not a fan of the whole camera part. Uh, I'm just, you know, that is something I'm not used to. I did a podcast for like, what, three years or something before, with no camera. Right. And I could be doing anything I wanted with my hands the whole time. Uh, not anymore. I got to <laughs> try. Yeah, now you got to uh, think about like, okay, people can actually see this. <laughs> right, exactly. 
So now, then you just got to stick your head in the shower to make everybody think you took one and go and do your thing. You know, that's well, we're what you got to do. Oh, that's <laughs> it. Get out of jail free card. That's, <laughs> that's right. right. All right. <laughs> all right. On. Well, thank you for joining me. Oh, you bet. Thank you for having me. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends or on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. It's really appreciated and it helps me spend more time on this and my other projects. If you want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a five-star rating or a re- and a review on the podcast app of your choice or on one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser or ratemypodcast.com would be great. If you want to find more from me, make sure to check out the show notes or check out my link tree. That's linktr.ee slash skeptical You can find all my social media stuff there, as well as links to my other show, From Many People's Strength, which is a podcast about Saskatchewan politics, and a project I'm involved in with my friend Damien Marie at Hope that's called Atheist, Humanist, Leftist Revolutionaries. My Twitter is at skeptical lefty, and my Facebook page is The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. You can email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. And if you want to be a guest on the show or know someone I should reach out to, then feel free to let me know. You can book interviews in my available time slots on my Calendly, which is also found in my link tree. Thanks so much for listening, and let's try to make sure we're applying critical thinking and reasoned skepticism when we're attacking the system. If we get caught up in bad thinking, we can derail ourselves. <laughs>